Lucas. The bucket, the handle, the handle. The bucket, the handle. The handle. The handle. Hey Rexy, you hot? Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name's Natalie from Living the Dream Permaculture and today I am back in the garden trying to get all those summer jobs finished before it starts raining. In the next couple of days we'll have three days of 10 plus mils of rain which is quite a bit for summer. We're in the middle of a La Nina so um, it hasn't been as hot as it usually is but it's certainly been wetter <laughs> than it usually is. Um, the garden is absolutely thriving with the weather conditions that we've been having, but I've been a bit behind on all my gardening jobs. So this week I've taken it off from my usual jobs and I'm focusing on cleaning up this mess. <laughs> so today on the cards, um, we want to clean up some of the weeds in the walkway. So we'll just be sheet mulching that. Um, and then topping that with some wood chips. Um, I'd love to stake some more tomatoes and I'd love to plant some canna lilies on this embankment here. Some of our friends um, were pulling some out a while ago. Sorry guys. <laughs> and we planted half of them but we just didn't get around to the other half. But they're still alive. They're really, really resilient which is um, why we're planting them here. And um, we want to get those in the ground today before it rains. And I'd love to chat to you a bit about our reasoning for planting that there on that embankment a bit later on. Um, and what else do we need to do today? Maybe a bit of weeding. There's not many weeds in the garden, but um, priority is staking, cleaning up the weeds in the walkway and the canna lilies. I think that should do it for today. So you may have noticed this lovely hill we live on. It doesn't look as hilly in the video, but it's a 30 degree slope. It's quite a steep slope. Over um, 500 meters, we drop down 100 meters below sea level. So 400 meters at the top, 300 at the bottom. So it is quite a significant slope. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because um, if we had a fire down the bottom and we had the right wind conditions, it would rip up the hill in about 30 seconds to our house. And we get quite a few bushfires in this part of Australia, surrounded by bush. We've got pine plantations as well. Don't know if you can pick that up. The pine plantations are there. And then Australian bush there. Very, very flammable. Um, our main fire sector though is from this side where it's a bit more clear. Um, but if we were to have a grass fire, for instance, down the bottom, it would rip right up in 30 seconds, like I said. So this area here, the veggie patch, is a little bit of a fire break. So it protects the homestead from just a grass fire, not a firestorm. We're not talking firestorms here because there's a whole different kettle of fish and um, I don't think this would be sufficient in protecting our, our home. Um, but if it was a grass fire, say if we were driving down um, and a spark caught on the dry grass and it was to come up the hill, um, this veggie patch would protect us. And then if we planted out that embankment with canna lilies, um, they are an ember trap, they hold a lot of moisture. Um, so they would um, prevent a fire from ripping up that hill to the house. So that's one of the reasons why I'm planting canna lilies there. Um, there are several other reasons. Let's go have a look at them now. We've been blessed with kaikuyu grass, which is an absolute pain in the butt in the veggie patch. It is a runner grass. 
and it's incredibly persistent and um, even if you were to sheet mulch it can run under the um, sheets for a couple of meters and then come up where you don't have a barrier um, so you can see there are some canna lilies there the ones that we planted earlier um, or a couple of months ago um, they form clumps with their tubers so I'm hoping um, that they will stop the grass from running down so I'm hoping they'll smother the grass and just prevent it from reaching the veggie patches another great thing about canna lilies is that you can chop and drop um, and I've got a big area I've got about 750 square meters of veggie patch and it can be hard to find enough organic matter to mulch it with and it can get really expensive if you're going to buy it in I have got some plans um, for some free ways to mulch this um, next season I do have a blog post on 10 free ways to mulch a veggie patch that is um, more of a smaller scale um, plan I do use some of those here um, but I do have plans to mulch this area for free next year which I'll um, talk about in another video but I want to be able to chop and drop the foliage from the canna lilies, um, grape mulch, and then bring it down here. So I'll do that in um, the end of winter when they're looking a little bit sad from the frosts and stuff that we've had um, and just before their spring growth. Um, another reason why I chose canna lilies is that they are actually edible, even though they aren't the Queensland arrowroot variety. I do have some of those. Um, this is the ornamental variety, but they're still edible. Um, so even if we didn't eat it, we could probably cook up the tubers and feed them out to our pigs or our chickens. Um, if we were desperate, we could eat them. I don't think we'll ever be that desperate. <laughs> um, they're really pretty, so I want to cover this. It's just such an eyesore. I really dislike this grassy hill. Um, so I'm trying to cover it as much as possible, and these will look really beautiful once it's full um, of the beautiful, lush, tropical looking canna lilies. And they also produce a really pretty flower around this time of year. Mine aren't flowering because um, I just planted them this year, but next year at this time of year, they will be flowering. And the bees could forage them if they wanted to. They do have plenty of other forage available and I envision that they will probably choose um, other things over them. But if they were desperate, they could um, visit the canna, canna flowers. So that's the reason why we planted and are going to continue planting canna lilies there. Um, we are a permaculture farm, so we try and have multiple uses um, for everything that we do. So we try not to do anything um, for one purpose only. Um, even though this veggie patch is full of annuals, um, the veggie patch itself serves another purpose to protect the house from a grass fire. Um, and so we go on with everything we do, we go on with that in mind. What can we um, use this for other than one purpose? So I said that the Cape gooseberries weren't an issue self-seeding in my garden. Yeah, they're starting to pop up. <laughs> to demon squares. Planting these. What are they? Cape gooseberries. Where are you going to plant them? In my veggie patch up there. <laughs> Then I'm going to turn, I'm dehydrate them and turn them into Inca berries because I love Inca berries. So do I. <laughs> I'm pulling out some of these self seeded tomatillos and I'm going to move them because they're a bit too close to my tomatoes here. Even though it's a heated heat of the day it's the, it's the wrong time to be moving them but um, it's either that or they get thrown in the compost bin so we're going to try and move them and see how they go I had a tomato die here so I'm going to pop one in this spot with the rest of the tomatoes and there we go one tomatillo it's probably enough um, I've got several more down there which is way too many for one family. They're very, very, very abundant. Um, but I've got a neighbor who loves them. So I give some to her and I want to make some salsa with them this year. So I've let them 
<laughs> so I've let more in my garden than I said I would. How beautiful is this day? I've just noticed the Tagasaski seed pods have dried, so it's time to harvest them. Otherwise, I'm going to get zillions of Tagasaski trees growing in my veggie patch. So the reason why I grew such a big tree here was to protect from our westerly winds, which we get quite a bit of. Um, obviously, it's open there where the gate is, but there is another windbreak planted along this fence here. You can see the steel picket. And then there's another one coming down like that. But it's still quite young. Um, the other purpose of these trees is to chop and drop and use as mulch. So I'll do that shortly, probably not today, um, but I'll do that in the next few weeks. Probably in this bed here, because I'm about to harvest that garlic, it desperately needs to come out. Um, this bed has good organic matter in it, um, but I'll probably just lay it on there because I can. And there's no such thing as too much organic matter, hey? Not when you live on silty soil. Making good use of these compost bins. So I think they were used as rabbit cages prior to our arrival on the farm. And um, they were left here and we've used some of them um, as supports for cucumbers and stuff like that. But I've also used several of these in the garden to pop in all my organic matter. So. Someone's thrown this, <clears throat> and it hasn't made it into the bin, but it goes into the bin, and at the end of the season, I harvest it and put it in um, beds to build it up. So you can see down here, it turns into beautiful organic matter, which is desperately needed in some of these beds. It's getting better. We're certainly building up that organic matter, but... Um, each year we try and add more and more and improve it more and more and we're seeing fantastic results in our plant health, plant growth and yield. These wheat grasses that came up from my straw, um, they just get pulled out and laid on top and they'll wilt in the sun and they'll just add more organic matter. You can see my tomatoes have this black um, spot all over it. It is a fungal infection, I believe, from all the rain we've been having. We had this last year too. We had a wet summer last year as well, but not as wet as this summer. Um, last year it didn't affect growth. We didn't get great yield. That was because it was so smoky and hazy and cloudy. Um, I don't believe it was because of this. We had lots of flowers, lots of fruit. They just didn't ripen. Um, I'm just going to leave it. You can pull them off and bag it up, but I've got so many tomatoes that it's just not feasible um, to do that. So I'm just going to leave it be and I'll get all this fresh growth and it should be okay. Um, you can see that there. It's looking nice and healthy. Um, but if I notice that it's becoming an issue, I can remove some of these lower branches and lower leaves to increase air circulation. Um, but at the moment, I'm just going to leave them. What have you got, Joe? A dahlia. Um, try again. And um, And what are you going to do with it? Be in my garden. Okay. What are you going to do with it? Once it grows. Eat it. What are you eat going to eat? Flowers. Mmm, yummy. Some of these calendulas. Okay. See ya. <laughs> Grass or soil? Soil. Soil and grass. Okay. We don't want grass though. It's not, it's not, it's not great. It's like rotting grass. Yeah. Okay. This is my corn bed and it's not doing the best, but we're slowly getting a little bit of growth. You can see my comfrey there in the background. I should chop and drop that in the next few days and use it probably in my tomato bed because um, they're really good to feed tomatoes. I've got some, whoops, I've got some comfrey tea over here. So I can water that on some 
um, of my other tomatoes. This big savoy cabbage has been in here for a while, starting to head up. I might harvest it soon only because it's taking up so much room and it's being attacked by um, green caterpillars. Got some sweet potatoes in here that I've been overwintering. I grew them from cutting um, in summer off a old sweet potato and yeah overwintered them in pots and then planted them out and they're starting to get some nice growth on them. If we don't get tubers we can always eat the leaves but we're hoping to get some tubers. Um, we are in a cool area so maybe we won't get um, many tubers and then one of my melons that it's doing pretty well out here actually. The other ones are fairly small. But hopefully this one can run and act as a bit of a ground cover for this corn. Because they like lots of moisture, lots of nutrients. So heaps of organic matter is in this soil. That beautiful soil. And it's nice and deep too. Gorgeous. So lots of moisture, lots of organic matter, and these guys will help preserve that moisture. And I'll eventually grow beans up them, which will help fix some nitrogen for them. I grew these eggplants from seed. I started them in, um, I believe the end of July or end of August, I can't remember. And they are doing so well. They're doing better than the ones I overwintered and planted up the top. I'm starting to get little flowers on them too, so that's really exciting. Last year I only got one half-eaten eggplant, so I'm hoping this year I get a few more. My chilies are getting huge. Um, and these are my capsicums, also grown from seed. So really looking forward to these. They like really rich soil as well, lots of moisture. They like a bit of shade, so I'm wondering how they're going to cope here. If you don't provide shade, you can burn the fruit. Um, which I've had happen in the past but I'm going to try and mitigate that by watering um, either the night before or early in the morning um, because I think that contributes to some of the sunburn um, but because it's a La Nina and not as hot as it could be um, I'm hoping they'll just be fine but that area is really starting to fill out and look nice and lush this tromboncino keeps growing by the day <laughs> lots and lots of baby fruit on them look at all that fruit these are so prolific and um, they create huge fruit i mean you could harvest that as it is or you could let it get big um, they can get over a meter long and really fat probably around that fat um, and if you let them cure on the vine and go orange light orange kind of like the color of their flower may be a bit duller. Um, they actually store really well. You can get six to 12 months um, in storage. And so they're a great zucchini substitute, um, especially because you can store them fresh for so long. Um, although when they go hard like that, they're probably better in a soup as a pumpkin substitute, but I'm going to be growing lots of pumpkins. So um, I'm going to just try them. Um, in like a zucchini slice or something like that once I store them but these ones I don't think they're pollinated properly you can see the ends are starting to shrivel and turn yellow so I'll probably just harvest these and use this portion of the fruit um, because I don't want them to waste their energy um, anymore into these fruits that aren't going to develop when I've got plenty more um, happening up there so let's take these off so that row of tomatoes are tied up. They're not as big as the other batch that we did yesterday, but it's good to get them tied up and not be so tangled. Um, and there's no fruit set on these yet, which is good. So don't knock any off. And now hopefully they can just grow bigger and healthier and grow lots of flowers and yummy fruit. This was my best bed last year. Then I grew garlic in here and the soil was really depleted. Um, so I made sure I added lots of compost to it and it seemed to have livened it up again. 
So now it's holding moisture again, it's full of life, and things are growing nicely, which is really nice. It's cooled down a bit, so we're back in the garden and we're going to plant out our canna lilies up on our embankment. These are the canna lilies that we're planting out. So they have these rhizomes. That sprout these leaves. Really pretty plant, so much nicer than, the, than this grass. And we've got a bit of it. There's about 300 square meters here, so it's nice that we can use this free resource into hopefully combating some of this kaikuyu. Down here, maybe. We'll see you guys.